Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Late Night Talk with me, your host, Ahmed Ali, and a very special night in Karbala. We are celebrating one of the most blessed occasions that Allah has granted us with. Uh, I won't introduce the topic nor the guest yet. Uh, we do have a very special guest with us uh, and a dear friend of mine and a brother of mine. Uh, but, but tonight is a very, as I mentioned, very special night. Everyone here, Karbala is packed, uh, lit up with lights. Uh, amazing view of what I can see right now uh, and I hope at home you guys are doing the same celebrating having cake uh, with Ghadir on it I did mention the topic uh, Eid al Ghadir on it you know celebrating it with your family with your mother and father uh, if you're married then you know with your wife and kids if you don't have kids just with your wife uh, but anyways uh, let's go to our special guest uh, Mr. Hussein Sukhni Assalamu alaikum Habib how's it going? Thank you having you on the show on Allah this special Allah occasion. Allah Although the, uh, Hussein does not, uh, you know, have me on his show, Welcome to Karbala, you know, <laughs> I stepped down and I said, you know what, you're going to be on my show. There's been a bit uh, of a feud as to who goes and, to the yeah. show. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's doing a very uh, nice job in, in Welcome Thank to Karbala. Much. Thank you very uh, much. You know, a lot of good feedback uh, has been coming in. I don't know why you're laughing, but, you know. Because I know you're trying to get me to pick the show. <laughs> We'll see, inshallah. Uh, wow, okay, okay. Uh, now, tonight, uh, something very nice. We've planned something uh, beneficial, fun, uh, you know, energetic at the same time. Uh, uh, yeah, let's get down to it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, tonight is, is, is very sweet. Uh, you know, we're trying to bring the smiles uh, on your faces uh, at the comfort of your home. Uh, from you know the land of, of, of peace, land of uh, Karbala. Welcome to Karbala. As I said, like we always present the show. With. Listen, I've copyrighted that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Okay. Uh, but yeah, we have a quiz. Uh, we're gonna quiz each other on uh, various topics. Uh, some of them are on Ghadir. Some of them are uh, on Amin bi Talib, and the rest are you know general uh, Islamic questions. I've prepared mine, and Hussein has prepared his. Uh, although, you know, according to my knowledge, I know I say, uh, said Ammar called me Ayatollah, you know, I don't know if you guys watched or not, <laughs> but he called me Ayatollah a couple of shows back, you know, so my questions are going to be pretty hard. I don't know if he's going to be able to Listen, answer them. I've got a leather folder. Ha that, oh, that should mean a lot, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it feels you know light. Let, it feels light. <laughs> it feels let, light. Let the points and the answers speak for us. Yes. Yeah? Uh, now, uh, I talked a lot. Uh, the first bit, uh, we'll get to talk about just Ghadir. Now, Hussein, a lot of people, uh, according to them, Ghadir means something different. Mm. Okay? But there's one theme that's in common between all of them. Now, to you, what's Ghadir? What does it mean to you? Is this part of the. No, no, it's questions? not. It's not. Okay. It's not. It's not. <laughs> so I can relax. Yeah. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ghadir. Yes. Eid al Ghadir to me, I have mixed feelings around this time of year. Okay. Which people are usually surprised to hear. Because it's so close to Muharram, people are getting into that Muharram vibe, preparing for Muharram. Yeah. At the same time, it's the happiest day of the year. Yeah. So you have sort of mixed feelings, you know, do I prepare for this? Do I prepare for that? Yeah. So it's a bit of, you know, pulling either way. Yeah. But at the same time, it is the happiest day of the year. It mm -hmm. is the day that completed our religion. Okay. Um, it's the day we are most proud of. It is Eid Allah Al Akbar. Yeah. Uh, more important than the end of the ayad we have. Mm -hmm. So, essentially, it is one of the most important days of the year. But at the same time, looking at where it's placed in the year, sort of gives me personally mixed feelings. Yes, it does. And mm -hmm. and actually, if you uh, realize, Ghadir was just you know, seventy days before the Prophet's uh, mm -hmm. death, seventy days before that, and and he made such a huge statement. Uh, on this day, and you know, I advise everyone tonight. We are going to touch upon, you know, Brother Hussein. We'll get to talk about uh, a little bit uh, on uh, Ghadir, but uh, it'd be amazing, you know, in your spare time, you know, spare ten minutes. Uh, it's not a lot. I mean, come Definitely on, not a lot. Uh, ten minutes. The amount of time we spend sleeping. <laughs> Take ten, ten minutes, minutes even before you go to sleep or when, mm. when you wake up. Ten minutes to read, you know, the, the sermon that Prophet Muhammad gave on Ghadir, and it'll give you a lot of sense. Uh, on, on uh, you know, the tranquility that should have been placed on earth, mm. you know, the peace that should have been, uh, you know, spread on earth, yet 
some, you know, deviated. We don't want to get into that. <laughs> you know, it is a happy occasion tonight. Uh, now, the first part of today, we're going to play a quiz. Now, if I answer correctly, I'll get a point. If I answer correctly, you'll get a point. At the end of the show, whoever wins gets one point. And tomorrow's show will count. And we're not going to reveal the, uh, the <coughs> winner. What does he do to the loser? Okay, Ooh. but <laughs> that's tomorrow. Uh, but the main game, at the end of the day, whoever wins gets one point. And tomorrow, if it's a draw, we'll do rock, paper, scissors or something. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, just we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, uh, now, uh, you start. <clears throat> so first question is for me, yeah? First question is for you. Okay, nice and easy. Okay. I'm not going to go too hard because, you know, I know you've taken it easy on me. Okay. <clears throat> you have your hopes up. <laughs> Please. All right. Hey, don't you want to be on my show? Just <laughs> I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> okay. Question number one. Okay. 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 I'm ready. I'm, I'm trying to find the easiest question for you. Here. Uh, no, no, go ahead. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Which chapter in the Holy Quran contains the verse that was revealed on the day of Ghadir? Name the chapter and the verse. Mm -hmm. uh, name the chapter and the verse? Uh, I, I believe, I believe, it's, it's, a, well, it's on my mind. Uh, is it Surah al Is that? The chapter and the verse. But is that correct though? Um, give me the full answer, okay, I'm not so, going to say. Uh, so I believe, I believe, although I may be wrong, Al-Ma'idah, Al-Yawma kmeltu lakum deenakum, wa atuntu alaykum ni'mati, wa radhitu lakum islam al Okay, which And then, uh, I think it's the third, or the 56th ayah. So is it the third or the 56th? 56th, I think. Okay, oh, so you can jot it down. He yeah. just changed the game. But anyways, no, yeah. No, no, so we can later have proof of what no. you said. Okay, all right. It's being recorded. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just forgot it's recorded. Anyways, uh, uh, but yeah, Khop. This is the first question. Now <coughs> it's my turn. What did the people say to Imam Ali when they were paying, paying allegiance to him? So what did the people say to Imam Ali when they were paying allegiance to him? You don't have the answer to that. Earlier, I was trying to cheat. So <laughs> I'm guessing he changed some of the questions. Let me see if I've got this down. You don't have it. I, uh, OK, so repeat the question, please. What do you do? Yeah, repeat the question, please. OK, so question number one. What did the people say to Imam Ali when they were paying allegiance to him? I don't know why you looked in your book, but that so makes me uh, <laughs> suspicious of whether you have the answers or no, not. No, no, I was just you know, planning ahead for my next question. Okay, all right. So the people, when they paid allegiance to Amir al-Mu'mineen, okay. I'm going to drag this on a bit so I can remember. So when they came on the day of Ghadir Khum to pay allegiance to Amir al-Mu'mineen, okay. they approached Amir al-Mu'mineen, Asadullah al-Ghalib. And they said? Salaam Allah alayhi. And they said, Labbaika ya Ali. Allah. <laughs> Allah. No, there is a, Dr. said, there is a narration on this. I'll start up, Bakhin, Bakhin. Bakhin, Bakhin, Laka Ya Ali. There's, there's a continuation, I know the first part, yeah, the continuation yeah. is not on my mind, that's the problem. Yeah. I'll have to give it a pass, to be honest. A pass? Yeah. Okay, all right, at least I pass. tried. Yeah. Okay, now it's your turn. No, the first part everyone knows, it's just it's the continuation that's the problem. Oh, uh -huh, okay, okay. <coughs> okay, okay, question number two. What was the date, full date of Ghadir? Full date of Ghadir, well, you know, 18th of the Hijjah. Uh, oh, 10th year after Hijrah. Oh, yeah. You're acting like you're thinking about it. When no, you, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, actually yeah. was. Because it's either 11 or 10th, but Prophet Muhammad died 10th year after Hijrah. Mm. So, you know. Ascent. 18th, 10th year after Hijrah. <laughs> the second question, according to a very well known narration, approximately, how many people were present on the day of Ghadir? There's a, it's, it's very well known, mentioned by both Sunnis and Shia. Didn't we say uh, this is a multiple choice uh, quiz? No, it wasn't. It wasn't? Oh, okay. It wasn't. See, I had my mind programmed that it might uh -huh, be a multiple okay. choice. So, of course, I have to improvise. Yes. Um. <laughs> okay, so, okay, I'll give you, I don't know if the viewer just saw him blink. Uh -huh. Uh, but no, no, no. I had a twitch uh, in my eyes. Yeah, a twitch in like, your eye. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you multiple choice. Um. 
120, 80,000, over approximately 100,000. Okay, so I have the uh, option to phone a friend. Oh, <laughs> is this is not? It's, it's, no, it's 80,000. 80, 80,000. 80,000. Okay, 80, okay. Okay. I don't have a pen to my. Okay, let me just. Uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Right, right. I have, I have memorized. Ah, eighty thousand. It's, it's being recorded by. Over the eighty thousand. Yeah. Okay. No, why are you changing the answer now? I'm not changing the okay, answer. So but it's, o it's over eighty thousand. It's it is over eighty thousand, yeah. but the narration says it's over a hundred thousand. Anyways, uh, <laughs> it's still over eighty thousand. Question number three is to you. Question number three. <clears throat> See, I don't know why I picked out easy questions. You said this is gonna be easy quiz. We're gonna act it out. I'll I'll give you easy ones. Don't worry. One of these are easy. You wanna play it? Okay. okay. They're easy. Yeah, but it's, can't, it's not top of my head, bro. Uh -huh, all right, all right. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> By the time Which we wait, sort of, yeah, okay. can you please not? All right, sorry, yeah, yeah. I need full concentration okay. while, yeah. All right, okay. I need full concentration. I know, you don't have I any glasses. I need, full, I need full concentration. Okay, please. I'm gonna give your. Please, I need full concentration. Okay. <laughs> uh, which sort of? is called the bride of the Quran. Which surah is called the bride of the Quran? At least pretend to get it wrong if you know it. Just to balance the scoreboard. Uh, okay. okay. Um, Ar-Rahman. Um, Ar-Rahman. Let me check again. Okay. I'll make a note of that later. Oh, yeah, because okay, so it's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Ar-Rahman. Uh, a very good question. Very easy as well. Um, in which country is the area of Ghadil Khum in? I mean, you can throw a rock Ooh, at a let, million people and fall 99%. Let me think about this one. <laughs> it is the area of Hijaz, modern day Saudi Arabia. Okay. But was known as Hijaz at the time. Okay. Because we refrain to use the words Saudi Arabia Allah, for Allah. this country okay, yeah. as it is. Yeah. Okay, so. Hijaz. Hijaz, yes. Your final answer? My final answer. Are you sure? 100% sure. All right, we're up to 250,000, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay. Wait, wait. Dinar or dollars? 250 dinar. That's like 20 <laughs> cents, bro. <laughs> Yalla. Okay. Very good. Um, very good. Why did I say very good to my own questions? <laughs> what is the famous narration by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam? As he raised the hands of Imam Ali, Amir al-Mu'mineen, on the day of Ghadir. Allah. Man kuntu mawla, fahada aliyun mawla. Allahumma wali man wala, wa ali man ada, wansur man nasara, wakhdul man khadala. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So basically, for uh, the people that don't know uh, the Arabic language, uh, when the Prophet raised the hand of Ali Talib, he hmm. said... Hey, listen, I asked you the question. Okay, don't so try to get uh, okay, me to that. Right. That, was that part of the answer? Yeah. Okay. You, you volunteered. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, so basically, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu uh, raised the hand of Ali Talib and he says, whoever I was the mawla, their mawla, basically meaning their leader, uh, then Ali is their leader. Ali Talib is their leader. Allahumma wali man wala. May Allah uh, you know, guide the ones uh, who take Ali ibn Talib as their mawla. Uh, this, this is just an off-top you know, <laughs> translation. Uh, I'm Allah just waiting wali, for him to slip up in the translation. <laughs> wali man wala. Basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you know, guiding the ones who follow Ali ibn Talib. Wa'adi man ada and be enemies uh, with those who you know, become enemies of Ali ibn Talib. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's funny about that narration to mention, Hussein, is on that day everyone pledged allegiance. Now, why would. Prophet Muhammad say to the Muslims, Allahumma wali man wala wa adi man ada, if everyone pledged allegiance because you know they have the unseen knowledge, knowledge of the unseen. They knew who they were going to get portrayed by. They knew what was going to exactly, happen. Exactly, exactly. And you know, it's, um, it's, it's unfortunate what happened later, but however, as I mentioned, we're in a, a happy mood right now. <laughs> okay, so question number four is to me. It's to you, yeah. How many battles? Okay, so I'll repeat that. How many battles did Imam Ali fight during his life? Do I have to name them? Yeah. Should have said name the battles. That okay. Okay, name the battles. How many and name them? Okay. <coughs> okay. This Two minutes <laughs> to the break. Yeah. <laughs> I just get. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Nahrawan. Okay. Uh, Jamal. Okay. Safin. Where when he had his khilafa. Then okay. you have uh, before that uh, Khaybar, Khandaq, 
بدر احد اوكي we'll see if you got that right your turn i don't have to tell you it's your turn no but you're the host it's, it's i'm the guest you want to guide the guest all right i'll guide you <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, Allah sent me as a guide, so I'm a guide you, all right? May Allah bless you and your family. <laughs> How many years was the Imamate period of Imam Al Hassan? How many years was the Imama of Imam Al Hassan? Al Mushtaba. Al Mushtaba, okay. Um, so, you know, according to. Uh, <laughs> according to the information you have on your computer. <laughs> uh, you know, from my very. Intense research, uh, you know that that I do on my spare time, you know, on the, the narration for the last forty years, for the last <laughs> forty some years, you know, um, I I would go with ten years. Let me. Oh, I would go with ten. I I, I think. So. I hope so. I hope. I thought what your research is. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. Um, now this this question is very tricky. Didn't you say it was two minutes to the break, ten minutes ago, or was that just to speed no, me up? No, two minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> last question. We'll go into a break. Name the famous du'a recited during Ramadan and recite the first few words. Did you just say, let me just get this question straight. Did you just say, name a famous du'a that is recited in Ramadan? Okay. You do realize Ramadan is the month of du'a, right? And yeah, I, can I, name, I can name 50 du'a. No, 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 but there's one recited after Salat al-Maghrib. There's one du'a famously known to be recited after Salat al-Maghrib. I'll give you a hint. Ya Aliyu, Ya Azim, Ya Ghafur, Ya Rahim. No, it's it's a very long du'a and it's it's like an opening. Allahumma ni afta ta'athana bihamdi. Okay. Okay. The first line. All right. The first line. What is it called? What is the du'a called? Du'a afta ta'ah. Okay. Good. You said the first line. I give you the first line. I said name the famous du'a. And also, just yeah. You said after Salat al-Maghrib. Salat al-Maghrib. Ya Aliyu, Ya Azim. Who after Maghrib? Yeah. Yeah. Like I mean. Please clarify that for the uh -huh. sake of the viewers, not to cause confusion. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 this one. Right. It's a right. mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so respect the viewers. We're going to go into a short break, and we'll be back shortly. But do stay tuned and have fun during the break. We'll be, we'll be back uh, with more fun topics to talk about. That's after the break. نسم يا عبير بالرياض الغدير ونقل بالأثير تنصيب الأمير نسم يا عبير بالرياض الغدير ونقل بالأثير تنصيب الأمير Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Late Night Talk with me, your host, Ahmed Ali. Uh, and as uh, we began off uh, the first part of tonight's episode, uh, I would like to congratulate you as well. Thank you very much. Uh, my, uh, I was talking to the guests. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was in the wind. Uh, and, and you, since okay, you put yeah. yourself in, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, everyone around the world on this very special night. Uh, it is uh, night of Ghadir. Everyone uh, is joyful. Uh, Karbala is lit up. It's unbelievable. Hussain, it's unbelievable. I'd, I'd, I'd leave you to comment on That's that. It's actually unbelievable the way the atmosphere has been made by the people, the amount of people that are here, the lights of the shrine, Ben Haramain. It's just a vibrant atmosphere. Everyone's wearing bright, colorful colors. Um, it's the happiest day of the year here. And I can't imagine how amazing it is in Najaf, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, in Najaf, mm. uh, last year I was actually fortunate to go to Najaf uh, and record there. Uh, it was actually very nice. And then. Uh, you know, I had to be pulled back to Karbala. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, right now, Najaf is the place to be, but you know, I can't complain. I'm near Abu al Fadl Abbas and, you know, mm. Amr Hussain alayhi uh, salam. But the second part of tonight's episode, uh, I want to get to know more about Hussain. You know, it's, uh, it's always, you know, on the cam. We don't know anything behind the cam. Uh, you know, we'll let the, few, the, the viewers know what Hussain does uh, behind the cam. Uh, and you know how his days are spent. <coughs> now, Hussein, what made you choose a show like Welcome to Karbala? That was a good relaxing question. I was going to panic for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, we'll set up slowly. Oh, okay, so I'll save some water for <laughs> the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Karbala. I've lived all my life in London. Okay. I've only been here for a year. Yeah. In fact, it's going to be your one year anniversary in a couple of days. Yes. Um, yeah, I come two, three times a year, four times a year sometimes. But every time I'm back in the UK, back in London, I always yearn to be back here. Uh -huh. I've never felt comfortable away from Karbala, away from Abba Abdullah Al-Hussein. Yes. 
It's TV. Yes, yes. So uh, I wanted to give people that experience as well. Yes. Providing them with an opportunity to perform a live ziyarah. We're going to be advertising here. Give okay. you the opportunity to perform a live ziyarah from your homes. <laughs> Just call in from your WhatsApp. <laughs> so yeah, well, yeah, that's basically it. I wanted to give people that opportunity, that platform, where they can look at the shrines, um, get their names called out next to the shrines, get their names written and put in the shrines. Mm -hmm. They can call in, perform a live ziyarah. Yeah. It creates a platform that I didn't have when I was in the UK. Uh -huh. So I think it's a great opportunity. It is. I mean, and uh, you know, when, when I was in Canada, uh, a lot of people, you know, because sometimes you do have the money, you don't have the time, and mm. sometimes you have the time, but you, you know, you're, you're low on budget. Um, Them, so, uh, broke uni days. Yeah, 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 yeah. some broke uni days. Uh, if you know the, the viewers, you know, remember those? Uh, a lot of people had those. Uh, yeah, very good times. Let's not get into details. Yeah, uh, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, but. Uh, Hussein's show is a very nice opportunity for everyone uh, to actually um, bring not only their souls, uh, but you know, spiritually and physically, uh, hopefully physically, to the land of Karbala. Uh, you know, and mm -hmm. um, I know in Ghadir you were doing a, a, a special uh, special night. What were you yes, doing? Yes, we had the special Al Ghadir uh, episode where we done a quiz as well. Yeah, I think three of the questions that asked, <laughs> I'm asking you now as yeah. well. Yeah, so. Um, we got a winner, and the winner received a flag from inside the shrine, from the inner dome of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Oh, nice. It's actually on the way to the viewer, to Canada, uh, inshallah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. uh, do you want to reveal the name? Uh, go on Facebook, welcome to Karbala, follow it, and you'll find the name. Oh, okay, all right. So, it's a, it's a shadow. He's not going to give the name <laughs> until you like the page. Uh, but, yes. Uh, now, a lot of people wonder. Mm. Coming from the UK, uh, you know, it's, it's very hard. Uh, I know, and I know you get this question a lot. I've gotten it a lot uh, when you come to Iraq. Uh, you know, what, what, are you, what are you doing here? We yeah, love this yeah. for fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have we have a, a co-worker with us. You know, he, when he always goes into, into our bust, office, bust into the room. Uh, you know, Why did you leave? <laughs> Why did you leave London? Why did you leave Canada? And come to Iraq? You know. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's, it's a funny question. He asked it in, in, a, in a very funny way. He doesn't actually mean it. But a lot of people mean this question when they ask it because they look at the West of being mm. um, a country that uh, you know, is, is very well developed. Look, at the end of the day... Yeah, uh, you're coming to Karbala. Yeah, at the end of the day, you don't know what you have till you lose it. You don't appreciate something when you're always around it. Yeah. So the people here, not everyone, maybe a lot of the people here, because they're always around the shrine, because they're always around this atmosphere, they don't appreciate that, they get bored that, of that burn. They get bored. But when you're living outside Iraq, away from the shrines, every time you hold the majlis, you wish you were here. Throughout there, you wish you were here doing ziyara, coming for Arba'in, Muharram, Majalis. You miss that vibe, that atmosphere. Yeah. So it's different. There we have a yearning. Here we have a duty. People mm -hmm. maybe don't accept that duty sometimes, but it's different. It's a different vibe, different feeling. Mm -hmm. So for me, because I lived away, I've always had that yearning. Now I have that linked with my duty to serve yeah. the Zawar of Imam Hussein, to serve yeah. Aba Abdullah. Mm -hmm. So Alhamdulillah, I've, ha I've got both of these things that I can work with now. Mm -hmm. Whereas the people here, some have their duty, some don't accept it, but they definitely don't have that yearning of uh -huh. someone who's been away from Aba Abdullah. And you know, and, and, and it makes sense because honestly, you know, for even when you go, you know, forget about being in Karbala, mm. uh, but when you go on a journey or when you go on a, a road trip, to a different city, to a different country, to a different continent, you know, when you come back home, there's that mm. special feeling, oh my God, yes. I'm, all, I'm, I'm finally home. You know, after such a lot, even if you had fun on that trip, you're gonna still have that feeling, oh my God, I'm still, I'm, I'm finally I'm home. home. Yeah, you know? this is my home sweet case home. of peace, that's exactly you know? it. Uh, but mm. Karbala is the home sweet home for all the Shia's out there. Uh, because honestly, uh, no matter how uh, well off you're living, uh, how good of a life you're having when you come to Karbala you feel like it's a it's the actual mm. home that you need to live in and, you and know. it's not just like us saying this because we, a lot of the Zawar that do come that we meet with yeah a lot of the groups that come that we work with yeah when as soon as they come to Karbala they they never want to leave it's not just the thing of oh I feel home like this is home but they yeah. just never want to leave yeah and when they do leave we always get messages we get emails we get calls yeah. saying I want to come back pray for me um, I miss the shrine, send me pictures. Yeah. People have that attachment once they come. They do. Mm. Uh, they do. Uh, now, uh, Hussein, how many times have you celebrated Ghadir uh, in Iraq? 
think maybe once, if not. Once was yeah. it last year? No, no, last year I was. I came after Ghadir last year. Last year I came two days before Muharram. So I think it was either 2007, I came a week before Muharram, or this is going to be my first. Oh, okay. I'm not sure, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so the first time, let's say, let's first say, or yeah, second time. I don't time. remember it. So this is my first time. Okay, say, so yeah. the first time you remember in Ghadir. Uh, now, uh, what's so special about Karbala and Ghadir? I know when the Ahlul Bayt say, this is the greatest Eid that Allah has gave us, uh, or given to us, um, what's so special about it? I think not just with Eid al-Ghadir, but with all the occasions, the happy and the grievous occasions, yeah. Karbala is the place to be. Okay, Next why? Next to Aba Abdullah, because Aba Abdullah is the fastest and the largest ship of salvation. Okay. So, me, not just because I'm the son of the city, or we're both sons of the city, we have this attachment to Aba Abdullah, yeah. but the service here is always going to be more. There's always going to be more pilgrims here than anywhere else. So, it is our duty to serve here, to welcome those guests, there's always going to be a huge atmosphere here. Mm -hmm. I could go to Najaf. Najaf is down the road. An yeah. hour drive. Yeah. So you're driving half an hour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's down the road. Yeah. So we could go. We could go do ziyara. But then we're missing out on serving the pilgrims here. Yeah. You know, being here on this platform to, to serve the viewers, uh, to give them a feeling of what's going on in Karbala. Yeah. Mm. Uh, now, uh, let's go back. You know, since we got enough uh, out of Hussein, we drained him enough today. We'll talk to him about tomorrow. Uh, but uh, the final uh, game for tonight, we have uh, on, a words game. There's another game. Uh, yeah, yeah, a words game. <laughs> yeah, it's it's simple. when you give me only one paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That's your bit, bro. That's, no, no, this, this is mine. I get to surprises, yeah, surprises. Uh, so uh, there's one more game. It's called words game. Now, uh, the way this work, uh, this this game this works. Games, yeah. <laughs> this word game. Uh, this game works. Uh, is basically I give Hussein a title. And he has to guess a word for that title. And for example, and he doesn't have a lot of time. So as soon as I say it, he has to answer. So let's go as an example, type of candy. Uh, okay, so wait, how does the game work again? Okay, so the game works as I tell you a type or a title for okay. anything. And I have to right? say something related to that. Something related to okay. the title. Good? Again. Type of candy. Licorice. Okay, so you had time to think yeah. about that. A founding father. A founding father? Yeah. Ibn al-Mu'mineen? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you cheated right there. <laughs> I'm thinking a founding father. What okay, year? Uh, 2018. Nationality? Iraqi. Number? 12. A round object? <laughs> a football? <laughs> okay. A body part? Uh, <laughs> chin. chin, since your chin is so nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> beautiful Listen, word. Don't get me started. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, a funny word. Uh, <laughs> about a week ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, a verb ending in ing. Playing. Okay. Adjective. My oh, mind's gone blank. Animal. Wait. My mind's gone blank. Wait, wait. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Animal or dog? Dog, okay. Profession. That's a profession? Yeah, but it takes a lot of hard work uh, to be me, uh, bro. Let me just Google that <laughs> <laughs> and see Presenter. what goes on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean. So, of this, course, I won. Uh, uh, you actually didn't win because you uh, stuttered on one or two. Um, but, uh, or three. <laughs> <laughs> or three or four or five or six. Um, the last questions for tonight. La ilaha. All right. We're going back to the quiz. Okay. And the way this works is basically, um, I hope I'm winning up to now. You got we to gotta count. Yeah. Um, but the last part for tonight is we get to ask asks you know we get to ask each other a question yeah, uh, on general topics mm. whether the quran whether in sports Hasn't whether in it anything been general already uh -huh. name a body part wasn't that general <laughs> no, no 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 but th this 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 was you know it's, it's it's a word game to see if you actually won or not which you lost uh, you know debatable we'll see after i'll I'll, yeah. I'll give you you know a we'll couple of, the end of the show, a couple of pointers yeah, yeah. Uh, like but um we're going back to the quiz, but it's different now. We mentioned a lot about, uh, a lot about Ghadir. 
Uh, now we want to see if Hussein actually knows about general topics. You know, knowing the Quran, knowing the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim as -salam. Okay? Uh, now, Brother Hussein. Ya yeah, Allah. Name the 14, in, the 14 infallibles backwards. I should know this. Okay. You, you have ten, five seconds. Five, five seconds to name 14 No, people. no, no, to start. Okay. Five. Imam Sahab al Zaman. Imam Hassan al Askari. Imam Ali al Hadi. Imam Muhammad al Jawad. Imam Ali al Rabah. Imam Musa al Kadhim. Imam Ja'far al Sadiq. Imam Muhammad al Baqar. Imam Ali al Sajjad. Imam Hussein ibn Ali al Shaheed. Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. Imam uh, Amir al Mu'mineen. Salam Allahi alayhi. Okay, I believe there's two more because I said 14 in Falah. No, you said 12 Imam. I said 14 from Zahra, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Great, great, great. Now, <laughs> why is it important to actually uh, ask this question? I thought I was going to mess up on that. Uh, no, <laughs> I was going to mess up on that. <laughs> a, a lot of people, you know, I, I, I did a survey once and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to surprise you. Uh, I did a oh. survey once. You saying survey surprises me? <laughs> no, no, really, because uh, I asked this question to mm. uh, a lot of people. Uh, approximately, you know, I'm not going to say many, but 50 people. That's a lot. 50 people. And I said, mention the Imams, not backwards, regularly, mm. from 1 to 12, or the infallibles from 1 to 14. And for, you know, t to be an actual Muslim, you know, or to be following any religion, you need to know the basics about mm. that religion. And the basics about, the, about Islam is to actually know the protectors the, of Islam. The problem is when you start saying, oh, we need to know this, people start labeling you as a religious fanatic. No, 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 so it's, 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 it's you know not a religious fanatic. That's the problem. People see it in that light. Whereas this is the actual, like you said, the fundamentals of our religion. I in mean, your grave, you can be asked, man imamuk. And Who is you, your you imam? Don't, you don't need to be a fundamental fanatic, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to ask that. Uh, who, 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 <laughs> slide past it. <laughs> slide past <laughs> it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know what I just said. Uh, but for a person to be following any religion, for I mean, example, when you're following Christianity, uh, you need to know who Jesus is and the disciples, and you learn about John, Matthew, Mark, and all of them. I just make saying random white names. Or <laughs> no, 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 no. The, okay. You know, you know, uh, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm a religious <laughs> studies graduate. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I would know that, uh, but no, no, with, with all honesty, you know, knowing, mm. you know, for a Christian, they can name you a lot of things about Jesus. But when it comes to Muslims, when, when you tell them, or specifically Shia, name me the 12 or 14 infallibles, they're going to have a hard time to do that. You know, that's why that's I request, that's religion. why I request from Brother Hussein to mention them again. Again? No, 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 but you know, with, so we have Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa In order. Prophet Muhammad in order. Wa Imam Ali ibn Talib, peace and blessings be upon him, which was appointed today as the successor of Prophet mm. Muhammad, you know, which is very fundamental to talk about because is he a spiritual leader or is he a physical leader? What do you think? He is the leader, full stop. Okay. Which means it covers everything. Everything. Maybe at the time he wasn't the political leader, at the time, uh, because of some uh, treacherous maneuvers by certain figures, but in general, he was the leader in everything. Mm -hmm. Like the Prophet said, uh, "Am I not? Do I not have the rights over the believers themselves?" Same with Amir al-Mu'minin. He passed that on to Imam Ali. He has the rights over us in everything, so he is the leader in everything. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, at the time, due to like I said, betrayals and uh, treacherous actions, he wasn't the political. Mm -hmm. Great. Now we have, and then after Imam Ali Talib alayhi salam, uh, which was appointed today by Allah subhanahu wa taala and by the Prophet, uh, which before we go to Fatima Zahra alayhi salam, uh, there's one very important point to talk about: is uh, God is like threatening the Prophet in the verse revealed on this day, you know, because He says, and if you don't, you know. <laughs> That's a big idea, right? You know, it's if, if you don't, and if you go through the Quran page by page, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, you're not going to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the Prophet, if you don't do this. We don't find that, except on Ghadir. Yeah. If you don't do this, O Prophet, if you don't reveal what was revealed you to you. You have not completed your, 
then you have not completed the well, religion. Yeah. You know, why do you think Allah tells the Prophet that? I mean, 23 years of hardship, of battle, of uh, you know, of pain, of pain, of you know, seeing your loved ones gone, your mother, your father, uh, your uncle, your uh, uncles. He didn't see his father, uh, but his his uncle. I was just uh, yeah, yeah, his his uncle, his other uncle Hamza Abu Talib. Seeing. Ilm al -ghayb, seeing all his family being killed, yeah. so it's not an easy life. It's not. Why would Allah, you know, type of threatening? Because, you know, when, when someone tells you, a if warning. you don't do this, a warning. a warning. If you don't do this, I'm going to do this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet, if you don't reveal this, you haven't completed religion. Why? I think I would encounter as a threat or a warning. I think that's just to show us, the people, the value of Ghadir. And the value of that day. Mm -hmm. like the Ahl Bayt and the Prophet are the Nur of Allah. So there's no reason for them to be, you know, you either do this or this happens. That doesn't apply to them. But that's just a lesson to us to show us that, you know what, that's just to that extent that even Allah warns the Prophet if you don't do this, the religion is not complete. All your hard years, hard uh, work, all these years, all the 124,000 Prophets before you, all that work. All of it goes to nothing if you don't complete this. Mm -hmm. That's just to show us the value of it, like, yeah. from what I understand from the ayah. So uh, I don't think we look into it much, but I think you know it's a threat, but more of a warning to us. Mm -hmm. And even then, you see a lot of people, they don't see that value. They don't appreciate that ayah. They don't appreciate mm -hmm. Ghadir. Yeah, because you know, my, my motive behind asking that question is because a, a lot of people, you know, when you talk to them, especially from the, uh, the Sufi school, uh, they say that Ali ibn Talib, yes, is an Imam, and they believe in the Imam. spiritual lord. But he, he's, he's our spiritual leader. Mm. You know, we, we take him as spiritually. Now, the question that I would like to end it with today is if you take someone spiritually in your spiritual life, now, in your spiritual life, Ali ibn Talib teaches you to be honest, to be trustworthy, to feed the poor, to feed the poor, the to have manners. Mm to look after the orphans, Doesn't to be a good governor, <laughs> to be a good leader. Now, if all of these fit into this person's characteristics, or th this person has these characteristics, then why is he just spiritual leader? Why isn't he actually the, 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 the actual leader of, of the mm. Ummah? Now, you know, just to keep the viewers wondering uh, with, with my very intelligent question. Uh, but no, no. With, Stay with, tuned for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if you have the answer, just, you know, answer below on YouTube. Uh, you know, keep, keep your uh, <laughs> comments below. Uh, but no, with, with all seriousness, a lot of people have that answer when you ask them, is he physically mm. uh, or, or spiritual leader? But I would like to thank you uh, very much tonight. Thank you uh, very much for allowing Habibi me to win. Hussain, so um, uh, we'll, we'll get to see later well, who won. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, respective viewers, thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Tomorrow, inshallah, at the same time, Late night talk, we'll be back, but have a good night.